wait a second. Michael Bay's not directing this one? After Camden saw the movie. A good Transformers movie! Yes! Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. No, I'm just kidding. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. No, I'm just kidding. It's sponsored by none of those. Green Sky Pals and Gal Pals is me, Camden, on channel Camden. The Transformers movies. Okay, so the Transformers movies. The first one was in 2007, and Michael Bay made it. And they made so much money that he made uh, like four sequels. And the first three sh um, starred Shia LaBeouf, and the first two st starred Megan Fox, and the other two was starred by Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, and they were not well received. I could tell you that. And the guy that made a review of every Transformer movie, Transformers movie, is this guy. guy is not very enthusiastic about the Michael Bay movies. And the first Nostalgia Critic episode was on the first Transformers movie. So, each movie got, kinda got worse and worse and worse and worse. Because the thing is, um, they had a lot of negative reception for the plot lines being way too similar, I'll get to that in a minute, the juvenile humor and the toilet humor, um, racial and sexist stereotypes, and many other things like that. And yeah, and the plot lines were kind of similar. There's MacGuffin that the Autobots and Decepticons are after. There's a, uh, like a government organization that hates your Transformers and trying to shoot them all down. There's a, and there's two human characters, one's a man and one's a woman, that has to help the Transformers get that certain MacGuffin. And then the Decepticons and the Autobots, they fight, and then explosions are happening, and you can't tell what's going on, and a bunch of shaky cam, and then Autonomous Prime makes a speech, and then the movie ends. Like us, there's more to them than meets the eye. I am Optimus Prime, and I send this message to any surviving Autobots taking refuge among the stars. We are here. We are waiting. So Michael Bay stopped directing Transformers movie and movies, and now we have Travis Knight, which directed Bumblebee, and everyone loved Bumblebee, so let's jump right into it, shall we? So our movie begins with the Autobots and Decepticons at war, and uh, they're all fighting, and it kind of feels like you're watching a Transformers cartoon, and that's pretty nice. And I saw Optimus Prime shows up. Where's T-180? Actually, it's T-800. Anyway, Bumblebee shows up and helps out. And Bumblebee escapes to Earth, and Autobot, the, all the other Autobots escape to Earth, too. And Decepticons also go to Earth. I also like that the movie takes place in 1987, where the Transformers first came out around the 80s. That's pretty interesting. It's like a Justice League movie that takes place in the 60s, or a Ninja Turtles movie that takes place in the 80s or 90s. It's pretty cool. Name is 
and yes, John Cena is in this movie, and he leads a <laughs> a, a government organization. You love them soldiers and stuff with guns in Transformers movies, don't you? I can tell what's going on. The camera's not shaking. There's not a bunch of explosions everywhere, even though there were some explosions, but not too much. Imagine Michael Bay in a movie theater, and he's watching a movie, and he's like this. No! No! There's supposed to be explosions! More explosions! Oh, also, Bumblebee loses his voice box, so he can't talk introduced to a human character and it's not Shia LaBeouf just, just do it don't let your dreams be dreams or Mark Wahlberg <laughs> no we're introduced to Charlie played by Haley Steinfeld and she lost her dad and she's pretty much traumatized and very sad and lonely Hey, at least you get, she get to see people in person, and not on a screen all the time, and she gets to go places without wearing a mask. <laughs> That's silly. That's like if a virus or something was around. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Never mind. And she gets in the car, and that car is Mumblebee. She doesn't know it's alive yet. And then, in Decepticon, Shatter, and Dropkick, they interrogate uh, an Autobot named Cliff Jumper, and he dies. Yeah, Cliff J Jumper dies in this movie, and he also dies in Transformers Prime. This franchise likes killing him off a lot. Charlie meets Bumblebee. Oh yeah, also I forgot to mention Bumblebee lost his memory, so um, yeah. Her mom drives the Bumblebee car, and she's worried that Bumblebee will turn into his regular form. Yeah. And the scene is pretty funny. And the Decepticons trick Sector 7 into thinking that Bumblebee is the enemy. On yours. How is it you think we can help? We need your eyes. Yeah. And... Hmm. And... Charlie and Bumblebee, they bond, become friends. And then Optimus Prime makes a message to Bumblebee. And then there's a flashback, which is pretty cool. Just him, you know. Fighting the Decepticons and stuff. Bumblebee gains a bit of his memory, but it's not all the way there yet. Also, I forgot to mention Charlie has a has a friend named Memo, and Memo has a crush on Charlie, of course. I said, of course. That reminds me of M. Bison. Of course! And then Bumblebee gets kidnapped by Sector 7 and the Decepticons. Number one, I forgot to mention that Charlie names Bumblebee, gave the name Bumblebee before they call him B127. Also, the movie ends. I'm just kidding, it didn't end. You should have saw your faces. Oh, wait, I can't really see your faces because and they interrogate him and they ask about where all the other Autobots are a scientist that's been working with Sector 7 figures out that uh, the Autobots are good the Decepticons are evil and before he tries to tell anyone um, one of the Decepticons turn him into uh, goo into goo or something it was some water type liquid so bumblebee gets his memory back and then 
he gets angry. And then he starts fighting. And then uh, Charlie calms her down. I mean, calms him down. Don't worry, later on, Sector 7 fig figures out that the Autobots are good. And then Bumblebee starts fighting Dropkick and Shatter. Also, what I like that happened is when Bumblebee start uh, to shoot his like handgun, the transformer sound effect out way out way out it plays, and that's pretty cool. Also, Bumblebee hits the um water, actually hits something, and then water comes out, and then the Decepticon shatter started um, drowning, and then. Charlie jumps in there and tries to help Bumblebee because he caught, got caught in there too. I have a feeling that there's going to be a fish out there that's saying this. Where's Nemo? Charlie and Bumblebee go their separate ways and then Bumblebee turns into a Camaro since he's a Camaro in all the other movies. Also, this will happen to Bumblebee. He, they start putting VHS, like, and they mix them up, and then, he, then, like, he plays songs and what he's trying to sing. So, yeah. And then, Bumblebee meets up with Optimus Prime and tells him that his name is Bumblebee, and, Charlie starts bonding with her family since she's happy again, and then the movie ends. This movie was pretty good. I really enjoyed it, and the acting is great, the CGI is very well done, and Bumblebee was a great character. It's all around a great film. You should check it out and watch it. A Nine Donuts. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like button and hit subscribe. And I'll be making videos every Monday at around 5 or 5.30ish. Anyway, see you guys around next time. Next week. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god.